Hello Vinyl community, um, I'm making a VC video after quite a long time and uh, um, I think I was not particularly inspired to do so in the last half a year or even more but um, I've watched a lot of Vinyl community videos and uh, usually it shows me that uh, some people are much better at this kind of uh, spontaneous material um, so um, it took me quite a while to um, do another video and uh, yeah mostly I felt inspired by uh, Big Star 1000 who started to make his VC videos again after quite a long time and um, yeah I think everybody probably knows Fred and uh, so I just tried to overcome my inhibitions <laughs> and um, pick up where I left and uh, yeah um, I just brought a little stack of records here that I've been listening to the last days and um, let's talk about those. Um, the first one is really brand new out of the press so to speak and it's called Hippopotamus by a German project called Belp and uh, this is an LP and um, it probably belongs into the world or realm of electro, electro music but it's not your typical straightforward techno sound it's a little bit more than that. It's quite intriguing. But um, it should be noted that we are living in a time when categorizations become more and more obsolete. So it's a little bit difficult to pin it down to a certain category. I mean, there's a lot of uh, elements of glitch and... I think there was a thing called Ilbient for a while, so you can kind of hear this echoing. Um, in the music. Um, it's a very sort of a harsh electronics sound um, with a touch of uh, industrial even. So I would say there is a general darkness to the album but the sounds are very well chosen. There are just bold artistic decisions happening here but very controlled so it's a rather minimalistic uh, record. But I also had a listen to the previous record, which is called Elephants, which is a 12 inch. And uh, in comparison, I find the new one a little more accessible. I mean, there are even tracks like uh, Clinging to a Cloud, which sort of uh, hints at the direction of ambient. So um, this one is certainly rhythmically more challenging. So if you are looking for, so to speak, uh, new grounds in music, uh, this project certainly is pushing the envelope. I remember that uh, Derek Higgins liked the previous one. Um, so if you like um, intelligent electronic music, this may be just for you. And um, so give it a try. Hippopotamus by Belp. So the next record is from the 80s and it comes from Kazumi Watanabe. And it's called The Spice of Life. Um, now this was uh, Kazumi Watanabe of course uh, is a famous Japanese guitar player uh, in the realm of uh, well jazz and fusion and prog rock and um, some people probably noticed him uh, in uh, if you look at some of the older Yellow Magic Orchestra live videos from late 70s early 80s during their world tour he was the, the guitar guy um, that joined uh, the trio. Now this is a sort of a power trio record uh, including uh, Bill Bruford on drums and Jeff Berlin on bass. Um, it's a wonderful record if you like if you like sort of fast intriguing uh, guitar playing and uh, intense guitar solos this is kind of the right record for you. Um, so it's a wonderful sound, great music. I have developed a certain knack for uh, this kind of uh, sound in the last years and um, this is a good one. Um, I mean the sound of his guitar playing is certainly a little bit inspired by Alan Holdsworth, I, there's no doubt about that, um, but uh, that's kind of good inspiration to have. Yeah, um, in the same sense um, this is uh, a record that came a year after that, The Spice of Life 2 by uh, Again, Kazumi Watanabe, 
Um, this kind of follows the same trend and it's actually I like it a little more. The only difference between the previous album is that this is not a trio anymore. This is uh, together with uh, uh, Peter Vettesi. Some know him probably from the 80s uh, Jethro Tull records um, who plays the keyboards here. So again, a wonderful sort of a fusion, jazz fusion album and uh, quite a fun to listen. Now of course, same musical culture is this record here. It's a compilation by Bill Bruford called Master Strokes. Um, so you have a sort of a extract here from Bruford's uh, solo records. Um, I did, he did three three albums under the Monica Bruford. Yeah, and uh, again you have basically the same guys here with uh, Jeff Berlin on bass and Alan Holdsworth on guitar. Um, and of course uh, Dave Stewart on keyboards. Um, so this is a wonderful, it's a wonderful record. Uh, actually, I particularly like Dave Stewart's playing with Bruford. Uh, that's quite a fantastic job that he does there on uh, all the studio albums. But um, there's a wonderful concert on YouTube. You can find it somewhere. Uh, with the Bruford band um, in this uh, rather magnificent lineup of uh, of Stewart, Berlin, Holdsworth, and Bruford. So um, if you haven't seen that one, you should do it because it's quite amazing. A lot of musicianship in one room, so to speak. Now something completely different. This is a wonderful uh, issue by Born Bad Records. It is called um, The African Electronic Music by uh, the Cameroon artist Francis Bebe. Now this is a wonderful uh, double album that uh, covers uh, the years 1975 to 1982. Um, so uh, the tracks are taken from all kind of 7 inches and 12 inches uh, released by Bebe in those years. Yeah, this is a wonderful record, very intriguing music. Um, somewhere on a, on, a, on a verge, on a border between uh, traditional African sounds and uh, um, electronic experiments and um, Francis Bebe is of course a legendary name in African music. So it's a beautifully crafted double album that comes with these uh, uh, hard paper inner sleeves with all these graphics. There is also um, a lot of liner text in French and in English about Francis Bebe. Um, I had posted this right away on the uh, Facebook vinyl community uh, group, so this was uh, immediately uh, censored by <laughs> Facebook because of the nudity, of course. Yeah, 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 like the kids are gonna gather around a mobile phone and masturbate to a cover from a record by Francis Bebe, but that's the time we live in. Um, and uh, but if you are looking um, for uh, a good solid record in your collection that kind of covers covers a lot of ground of African music. This is the right one. And finally I have one more record here. It's one that I really like and I've been listening a lot the last days and that's the album On by Alton Gunn. Now if you like, uh, if you have a knack for uh, Turkish psychedelic music of the late 70s and that was actually quite a scene, or quite an issue back in the day. Uh, this is a modern time contemporary band that is kind of inspired by those records. And this is what they do. So this is sort of Turkish psychedelia. And it's a brilliant album. It's really fun to listen to this. It's, it's really fitting to the hot summer we are experiencing here right now. So um, this is an excellent outfit. Um, really sort of tight playing band um, that uh, creates this uh, amazing mixture of uh, psychedelic music but also with a lot of uh, traditional elements. So this is a great band mixing uh, psychedelic music uh, with uh, quite obvious references to traditional Turkish music, music from Anatolia. Yeah, this was released on Bongo Joe. And uh, yeah, I can really recommend this if you are looking for this particular kind of sound. I'm just a big fan right now. So, 
that's it for now. Um, I hope this was in any way interesting to you. And maybe I will do this again after a while. I don't know. I make no promises. Um, but let's see how the summer goes. So, have a nice day and uh, see you again. Goodbye.